Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. So today I am going to be warping the Diamonds and Bars Twill Rug Warp. So in the previous video I uh, showed you how I expanded the dimensions of my uh, pattern that is published in the Handwoven Magazine and uh, but I wanted it a different size so I figured out what my the length of my warp would be how much yarn I needed how many ends I needed so we're going to be using that information today and winding the warp so what I do is I have a piece of string that is um, not it doesn't stretch um, you can use linen um, I think this is actually I'm not sure what this is I got it in a yard sale um, so I have like I don't know five yards of this string and I've used it over and over and over and I've got various uh, loops tied in it and the way I use it is I take one end that has a loop in it and I take my measuring tape and I measure off um, enough of the string to make my warp, which in this project is two and three quarter yards long. So here's the loop for my two and three quarter yards. Okay. So if I needed three yards, there's probably a loop there too. No, there's not a loop there. Um, but if I needed three and three quarter yards, there's a loop there. Um, there's probably a loop for most any measurement I need. And if there's not, I just make another loop. So we're going to say two and three quarter yards. And the rest of the string I'll just kind of wind up um, to stay out of my way. So I use a warping board and we're going to start in the upper left hand corner and I usually make a cross here and at the bottom. I always make two crosses. So we'll just kind of randomly put this over. That's not quite long enough for one. Uh, that's not really. Let's see if we can find a better route. Mm. I think that's going to work right there. So what I'll do is just kind of stretch this if I can. There. And it stretches a little bit, but it's not, it's not really stretchy. Okay, so that is pretty tight. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the warping board, um, it's a series of pegs and I actually made this warping board so it's, it's not standard, but it can be taken apart and that's why I like it. Um, but it's a, it's a series of pegs on um, the boards that if you take different routes, uh, you can create different lengths. And the string is, your, is where your path is. So once I push it all back, it's pretty easy. It, it's, it's not really super tight. Um, so there we go. And then the excess, I'm just going to wind back along here. Um, and I'll just kind of wind it around here just to get it out of the way. And if I'm going to, if I'm going to wind the excess back on, 
I want to be sure to go along the same path so that I don't get confused and take the wrong path when I'm winding my warp because if I did that, then my warp wouldn't be the same length um, for each bout. So let me grab my warp over here. And this is a, excuse me, uh, this is a four ply um, rug warp. And I believe it is uh, 560 yards per pound. So it's, it's really tough stuff. I mean, it's 100% wool, but it's really tough. All right, so we're going to wind um, 207 uh, warp ends at two and three quarter yards. So I'm going to come from my top peg here, and I'm going to go over to one about the middle peg, and I'm going to go from the bottom to the top. And then I'm going to follow my string all the way around and when I come around the bottom I'm going to go from I'm going to come in one peg come up to the top go around that this peg which is my ending peg come around the bottom and this is across and then I come around the top of this peg and then around the corner peg and then I follow around again. When I get to the top, I'm going to come across to one peg before I switched from the bottom to the top and I'm going to come down under and then come to the top. And here's the second cross. I always make two crosses. Uh, this cross is the cross I'll use when I uh, put it on my loom. And this cross is the one that is a backup in case I lose my cross. So we're just going to continue on. And when you are winding the warp, you want to keep even tension not pulling too hard, not overlapping on the previous um, row, and pushing your yarn back to the previous row. You don't want them sitting on top of each other. So I wouldn't take this and put it so that it is on top of the yarn that I've already wound. Um, I want to keep it, keep them all lined up evenly. And I'm not going to pull real hard. Um, I'm just going to keep it so that it doesn't, it doesn't sag. And I will Probably, since I need 207 ends, I'll probably divide this into uh, 50s. So I'll do 50 uh, passes uh, four times. Ah, okay, here is um, something that you want to be sure to avoid. So this particular um, cone of yarn, I knew had a couple breaks in it, but because it has plenty on it uh, for my purposes, I didn't, I didn't mind that. They told me when I purchased it that it had a couple breaks, so that's totally fine. But you don't want a knot in 
the middle of your warp. So if you come across a knot or if you come across a break like this, um, go ahead and back it off back to the closest uh, peg, um, corner peg. So these are your two ends. And then create your knot there. So I am going to tie this right here. And if the knot is at the end, it's not going to affect your project. And now I can continue winding my work. So if that had been a knot, um, I would just cut the knot out and um, remove the knot up to this corner. This is an interesting product because evidently it's waxed. I didn't know that, um, but this is what the pattern called for, uh, this specific brand. And um, I don't believe I read on the website when I was buying it that it's waxed, but the uh, label in it says it's got wax in it and I can actually feel the wax in it. It probably gives it some strength. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to uh, count how many uh, repeats that I have here. Um, I don't really count when I'm winding it. I just find it's, I always lose my place anyways, so. So I like to use these um, Ikea chip clips and well, I didn't buy them at our Ikea. I bought them off Amazon. Um, they're just chip clips. So, uh, but you can get them at Ikea, I guess. Uh, these are great for holding your warp. Um, because they tend to hold it very firmly. So I'm going to feed this through here. And I'm going to put one of these on each leg of my cross. And then I'm going to I can use this little excess piece. Uh, I'm going to tie just kind of a keeper through this secure security cross. And um, since, since this cross isn't going to be used unless I lose my cross, um, I don't really need to worry about it too much. And given that the warp is um, all one color anyways, uh, it's not like I'm having to um, make sure I keep the I don't need to make sure I keep the colors uh, in the right order for when I'm threading. And then take this and I'll clamp it off. And then I am going to um, cut this one. 
and I'm going to chain this and it's a fairly short um, warp so it shouldn't shouldn't be too much of a problem but I just I like chaining my warps it just makes them behave themselves so I create a loop and push the loop through itself and then I take that loop and I pull the next loop through and I always keep tension on it keep working it the loop through each one of itself until you get up here at the top and then you can just pull the whole thing off so now i'm going to take this and i am going to um, put it over on my loom and make note that it's 52 uh, ends not 50 and then we'll do the next one So this is the last bout that I'm wind, winding. And because the pattern calls for 207 ends, uh, I'm going to end on the bottom peg. And that will give me an odd number of uh, warp threads. So I got the warp wound and um, threaded onto my leaf sticks. And now I'm getting ready to uh, pre-slay my reed. Now, I warp um, back to front. With this particular loom, I use the reed as a rattle to spread my warp. So you don't have to do this part if you warp from uh, back to front and you use a rattle to spread your warp. Uh, but this is the way that I do it. So what I have done is I mark out where the middle of my reed is, and then my, oh, excuse me, my warp is 31 and a half inches wide. So I know that I need to measure out from the center out 15 and three quarter inches. Now I'm using a six dent reed and this project is uh, six picks per inch or six ends per inch. So what I need to do because my warp is wound into loops that I don't want to cut, I want to keep these uh, intact. So I will be putting um, one set or one loop through every other dent. And it's nice with a big dent size like this that I don't need to use uh, a reed hook or anything like that, a threading hook. I just push them through with my fingers. So the trick will be to remember that I'm doing every other one and not get distracted. So now what I do is I take all these and 
I've got this set so that uh, it can't pull out and unravel the bout. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of hold that steady and pull these all up until they have all the slack taken out of them. And then I find the loop by separating the two halves at the least stick and then just tr basically transferring that to behind the reed. And this will let me figure out where all my loops are. And sometimes I miss one here or there. And then we're going to take the clip put it through there so that I don't lose those. Let's see if I can get these. Yep. Okay, so we've got it all pre-slayed, and now I can put the warp bar through the loops and start winding onto my back beam. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I am going to wind the warp on until it until it gets up to my uh, warp beam. Okay, so I am uh, at the warping warp beam, and I'm going to put in my heavy paper. Ah, perfect. Okay, so um, this wrapping paper uh, end tube, which is really just very heavy. Uh, work paper. If you get an extra long roll of wrapping paper, um, this is great for the your wider works. just really protects uh, the cords and kind of doesn't um, get torn by the cords, the work cords as easily.
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to apply some weight to the warp and I am going to transfer my cross from in front of the reed to behind the reed. So I showed the other day how I use these uh, juice bottle um, to uh, warp, to weight my warp when I'm winding on. And these are great because uh, they're, what, 20 ounces. They're um, probably about a, two pounds, maybe. Not quite. And they, because they're unopened, they are a consistent weight. You could do the same thing with um, the same size bottle filled with water. Uh, I just happen to not have drank these yet. Um, but when I showed how I use them as weights to wind my wort by myself, somebody asked um, how I uh, connected it to my warp. So I thought that I would demonstrate that. So I've got a loop of um, twine that is probably about uh, 10 inches in diameter. Um, and then I just take that and I wrap it around the bout of warp and I put one end through the other end of the loop and then pull it tight. And what that does is it creates a snip or a cinch knot. And then I take the other end and I create a snitch knot, which if you take the loop, you put your thumb and your finger in the loop and then you grab the legs of the loop and pull it through, you create another loop. Then I put my juice bottle through that loop and tighten it up. And both of these loops are self cinching. So the more weight you put on it, the tighter those will get. But when you remove the weight, they come off really easily. So that's how I do that. And I am going to put my breast beam in here for the moment so that I have something to wait over there. Uh, because I just, I want to give some weight to the warp while I'm transferring my cross. Just makes it easier. And the great part about having these juice bottles in here is if I get thirsty, I have something to drink. But then I have to go get one out of the pantry, so. Okay, there. Now I can transfer my cross. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the front leaf stick closest to the reed and push it up to the reed and turn it on end. Now, behind the reed, we can see that we have a very clear shed. So we're going to take our third leaf stick and we're going to thread it through that shed. Okay. So now we've got it threaded through the shed and we'll push it way back out of our way. Now I can take the leaf stick that is closest to the reed in front. I can remove it and put it up where I can reach it easily. Then we're going to take this back um, leaf stick that's in front of the reed 
and we'll push it up to the reed like we did the other one and turn it on end. That will open up a sh another shed. Now this one is possible to have some threads hanging down a little more readily, but if you just get down at eye level and you can see that I've got a shed here. Let's see if I can, there we go. All right, and then we'll just keep that leaf stick on its side up against the reed and we can just feed that through our shed. Now, before we remove that one, I always like to pull that leaf stick back to the front, the one, the first one that we put in, and just run my eye down and make sure that there's no big glaring errors. Um, and with this warp, it's all one color and it's not going to be a huge issue if there are two that are out of order. Um, but if you had a color that was out of order, uh, that might be a different story. Um, this end thread here, I didn't get caught. So I'm just going to manually poke it under there. And again, that was not a big deal, but let's have it correct. Okay, so it looks good. So now I can remove that leaf stick from the front. And I'm going to thread my hammock cords back through my leaf sticks so that they are secure. And I just use, um, I just use a big tapestry needle. I just thread that through. So the way that I do this is I have a piece of twine that goes um, from the front of the loom to the back around the back beam and then back to the front. And I take one of the cords and I go down through the leaf stick in the back and I pull that through and then I go down through the next leaf stick and pull that through. Now I'm going to take the other cord. So basically I've got a big loop and it's not connected in the front. I'm going to put that through my and then I, instead of going down, I come up. The back leaf stick, and then I go to the bottom and come up the front leaf stick. And what that does is it creates a, a cross here that will help keep the leaf sticks taut, uh, but still allow them to move. And then I bring those two cords to the front and I tie them around the breast beam. And I tie them fairly tight 
so that the uh, leaf sticks are hammocked. All right, now I'm gonna go do the same thing on the other end. There. Now those are nice and tight and I'm going to go ahead and push my beater back a little bit. And now I can continue to wind my warp on. I took the opportunity to uh, install my warp separator paper. So now I'm going to go ahead and carefully start winding the warp on. Now remember that this is weighted so uh, there is even tension on it and I'm going to kind of pull my warp separator paper forward so that it doesn't get in the way and now I can come here in the front and move my weights down. on as far as I can uh, with it uh, before I cut the front loops and then I can um, hang the leaf sticks to thread the huddles. So we'll go ahead and take the weights off, um, secure the leaf sticks and hang them and then we can remove the beater bar and start threading huddles. Now I am ready to lift the Jeff box back up into position up here, and then I can thread my heddles. So we're going to go ahead and leave it there for now, and I will do that tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel to be notified when I release future videos. Thanks, and happy weaving!